فعاش القلب إخلاصا وصرت تحومك الطير تحلق في ثقافات وتنهل من روبا الخير السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين We praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala We send blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam His household, his companions May Allah bless them all and bless every one of us Ameen My brothers and sisters You and I know that we have been created very differently By Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala No two human beings are the same when it comes to your features, when it comes to your identity, when it comes to your fingerprint, when it comes to the iris that you have, every single one of us is very, very different. And you know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created us in different parts of the globe. Different races, different tribes. Now we even have different nationalities. And all this is for a purpose. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about this purpose in Surah Al-Hujurat, many other places as well, but in Surah Al-Hujurat, Allah says, Ya ayyuhan nasu inna khalaqnakum min dhakarin wa untha wa ja'alnakum shu'uban wa qaba'ila lita'arafu O oh people, I have created you from a single male and a female. And I have made you into different people, different tribes, in order that you recognize one another, in order that you become acquainted with one another, you know one another. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, we've made you differently so that you appreciate each other, so that you acknowledge each other, so that you earn a reward by living together and by understanding that the plan of Allah is for you to live together even though you are different. And this is why we forget as humankind, we forget, every one of us forgets, myself included, that we are all the children of one man. One man. We forget that. Wallahi, you have a problem with someone, you forget that's your brother. You have a problem with someone, you forget she is your sister. Ultimately, your mother, your father was actually one. Who was that? Adam alayhi salam and Hawa alayhi salatu was salam. So the next time you look at someone, I'm not talking of Muslims alone. I'm talking of non-Muslims as well. The next time you see people on the street, the next time you see the homeless, the next time you see those struggling, tell yourself, my brother, my sister. And this is what is supposed to make you reach out to them because they don't have what you have. You will never be able to understand the plan of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if you haven't looked into it, if you haven't understood revelation. How then would you be able to know what is required of you by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or from you? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy. When, when you see your blood brother after so long or your mother, father, sister, in most cases we would be super excited. That's my brother. That's my sister. We would be so happy and delighted. We would embrace them, especially if we're seeing them after a long time. Well, I tell you the same applies to every human being. No matter who they are, you are my brother. We are supposed to be feeling a genuine feeling in our hearts for all mankind. And after that, the rest of the creatures of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because the common point between us and animals, birds, fish, the plants, the trees, is that he who made me decided to make them too. Allah made me. The same Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decided, you know what? I'm going to make other things to test you. How are you going to be with all these things? But start with the people who are just like you. And the reason why we are speaking about living together today is because in every home we have a problem. In every community we have an issue. In every masjid we have issues across the globe. I have yet to come across a single masjid where there's no politics at all. 
May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us. Now, how would we be able to live together? Number one, like I said, understand the plan of Allah. Understand that we are brothers and sisters. When that is the case, try and understand everyone's temperament is different. Everyone's thinking is different. If Allah wanted, he could have made us all the same. If Allah wanted, he could have made all the people into one big ummah, one big group. But Allah says, no, I want to test you. Your test is, you are different from the other person in so many ways. Your thinking is different. They have chosen differently from you. Do you respect them? Do you fulfill your rights? And do you fulfill their rights? The rights over you. The rights over them. Do you understand that the temperament of every individual is going to be different? And when you've understood that, you need to acknowledge that you are just one, a figure, number one, one out of billions. You are one. What makes you special? What makes you important? What makes you different? What makes you think for a moment that you are more important than the others? That is where we will not be able to live together. And that brings me to point number two. You want to live together, you have to be easygoing. You want to live together, you have to learn to give up your opinion where it is something that is not extremely important. Yes, if there is a lion right outside the door and you're saying leave the door closed and someone is saying open it, in that case you don't need to really give up your opinion because you know something. But... We're talking of basics. You want to live together in the home, husband and wife. You want to live together in different, meaning with your, even with your own brothers as you become older. Give them their independence. Do you know what that means? They need to start thinking for themselves. Your own children, at a certain age, you have to start allowing them to make their own mistakes sometimes. You have to allow them to think on their own we would like to hope that when they were young, you gave them the baton. You taught them how to think. You taught them how to react. You taught them how to look at things and how to earn a living, how to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then at a certain age, you have to leave them. They will be on their own. They will get married. May Allah make it easy. And what will happen thereafter? They have to start making decisions. The day you as a father or a mother start making every decision for your married child is the day you will not be able to live together. You won't. It will last a short period of time and people will become irritated of you. They will be cursing you if they are too scared to tell you that you know what? Stop making decisions for us. This is an important point. You want to live with people, you've got to understand Allah gave them a brain different from yours, even if you are the father or the mother. Yes, in the initial stages, you will have to guide. Like I said, I'm talking of beyond a certain point. Now you've got to allow them, let them get, do not let them be in such a comfort zone that they will not be able to survive the day you are not there. Let them go. Let them continue. They will appreciate you don't have to all be in one roof to be living together. Togetherness here does not mean physical togetherness, but rather the togetherness of the hearts, the togetherness of the minds, the togetherness in such a way that we love each other, we visit, we feel for each other, we care for each other. But when you want everyone to physically be together against their will, in that particular case, you won't be able to live together. You make life a living hell for others. The same applies in community and societies. You have, for example, various people in various fields. You need to understand. I'm going to give you a typical example of a masjid, for example. You have the imam, give him his respect. He may not think exactly like you. He may not come up with the exact solutions, but you need to understand Allah has given you a brain, Allah has given you a mouth, Allah has given you the ability to be respectful when you put forward your opinion. And that brings me to another point. If you want to live together, watch your mouth. Don't be vulgar. Never be vulgar, subhanallah. Always be respectful. People have paid heavy prices for the way they use their mouth. Heavy price. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. So even if you differ with someone very strongly on some matter, be respectful, discuss it like a human being. As they say, 
be very mature about it. Don't be childish. Don't be immature. You want to live together. You cannot have so many people who are in charge of the same thing. Subhanallah. There has to be one person in charge. Perhaps two, three others who are helping. Perhaps you might have, for example, in a masjid, a committee that probably looks after the the masjid and the upkeep, they are answerable to whom? To the person maybe who's above them. And that person is ultimately answerable to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you have, like I said, the imam of the masjid, if he's not given the respect, how do you expect our children to be benefiting from him or from the masjid? Because as soon as something happens, we open our mouths so loud that the children start listening and when they listen do you know how they feel they start thinking to themselves well this is how you're supposed to be talking to the imam my dad fixed up the imam the last time he gave a problem no you have something be respectful in that case you would be able to teach your children something teach them respect like i said we will differ in our thinking but we are living together because we will keep discussing say i have a problem with you for example i will talk I will come, I will present my opinion in a respectful manner. And I must allow you exactly the same because I'm no better. I presented my opinion. If I want to live together, ultimately I need to allow you to present your opinion. I need to allow you. And we need to be doing this for the sake of Allah. Not because I have an ulterior motive behind and I want to try and propel myself or I want to do something, I want to be corrupt, I want to steal or whatever else it may be. No, we do it for the sake of Allah. That's when you get along. When we have ulterior motives, we never get along because you are not genuine. And that brings me to another point. If you want to live together, you need to be sincere, genuine. You need to love others for the sake of Allah. None of you are true believers until you love for another or the other what you love for yourself. Subhanallah. That's not easy. So if you want to know why we don't get along, it's because we love everything for ourselves that is good and whatever is bad, we love it for others. If you want to live together, be careful of gossip and rumor. Be careful of falsehood. Remember today we are living in an age of fake news. Recently we had an issue which is still going on in my country Zimbabwe. And what I learned from it is 95% of the news is not accurate. What percentage? 95% of the news is not accurate. It's called fake news. We are living in an age where you have to be very, very careful what you believe, what you take. Because you hear something, you forward it, you get excited. We're all guilty to a certain extent. But we learn as time passes that you know what? Be careful. Allah says, فَتَبَيَّنُوا In the same surah, Surah al Hujurat, Allah says, authenticate thoroughly before you believe something. Authenticate it. Make sure it is true. What we have a habit of, the minute you hear something bad, and this happens even amongst ulama. And this is why ulama don't get along sometimes, because each one is on his own sometimes. When you hear something good about another, you get jealous. When you hear something bad about another, you get happy. Quickly forward it to the rest of the world. You know what happened to that guy? You don't realize they're going to do the same to you. And they perhaps are already doing it. So you dropping him, he's dropping you. The other one is dropping both of you. And a fourth one is dropping all three of you. You're all dropped. But if you stood up for each other, for example, I'm not saying support and encourage that which is bad. If someone has done something wrong, you need to correct it in a respectful manner. Mark the word respectful, proper. You need to do it in a mature way. When I talk to you, no matter who you are, no matter what your color is, no matter what your financial standing is, no matter what your job is, I need to speak to you as an equal with utmost respect. Subhanallah. That's when I'll be able to live with you. The minute you despise someone, you can never live with them. Never. They will dislike you with a passion. So that brings me to another point. If you want to live together, you cannot despise people. You cannot belittle people. You cannot make people feel small. For what? They won't want to live with you. You're not going to be able to live with them. Give them importance. Greet them. Smile at them. Subhanallah. Smile at them. Greet them. Give them a bit of time. Sacrifice some of what Allah gave you in order to be able to live together. We give each other gifts. Small gifts. Subhanallah. Something, it's more the token. It's more as they say, you know, when you give someone something, they say that forget about what exactly it is. 
It is the thought that counts. That's what they say. The thought. The fact that you gave something to someone. MashaAllah, it will make you closer to each other. You get along a little bit more. Spend that which is, which is valuable in your heart on people, on some others, those who are your family members, your community members, sometimes those whom you don't know at all. Spend a little bit on them. Give your time, your money. See how you feel. Subhanallah. Good feeling. You saw a poor person and he's begging every day. Instead of saying, don't give him, discourage if you don't want to give, it's okay. But what's the key word? Be respectful. Be respectful. As for the beggar, the one who is asking, don't ever rebuke him, Allah says. Otherwise, what happens? You create hatred. You don't know his need. He might be in desperate need. Maybe the, the person who gives that beggar a little bit, who knows, they might have prayed to Allah for sustenance and Allah uses you to give them two rands. And Allah multiplies that particular two rands in a way that no other wealth of yours has been multiplied. You know, we, and I'm sure it happens to you guys as well, in our countries we are fortunate. You have seeds, apple seeds, you throw them on the ground. What happens? It starts growing after a while. If you just happen to do that during the rainy season you find a small little you know seedling starts growing etc becomes a little tree and the next thing there are apples you never know which seed is going to give you the sweetest apples right you never know which seed is going to give you a tree that will bear the best fruit but it was also just one seed subhanallah same applies to your money to your time you never know you sacrifice some time to attend that which is a community affair subhanallah this is why you come to the masjid because you have to live together allah forces the men to say you have got to come why are we here today you are forced by allah we consider it an honor and a pleasure but in actual fact it is an instruction of allah you've got to go do you know one of the reasons to get to meet each other to get to know each other this is why you cannot reserve a place in a mosque unless it is for those who with knowledge who will be standing right behind the imam in order to correct and in order to take over if something goes wrong the rest there is no way that you can book a seat in the mosque. The masjid, the rich and the poor, the tall and the short, the dark and the fair, everyone in one line, subhanallah. The guy who owes you money also right next to you. You can't say you owe me 500 rands, you better go back, five safs. That doesn't happen, subhanallah. Because Allah wants you to live together, to get along. Put aside your differences, come in front of Allah. Put us, if you can put aside your differences, you have got along very well. Let me explain to you another point. If you want to live together, you have to be a very forgiving person. If you cannot forgive in a rush, you're not going to be able to live with people. Never. You have to be forgiving, especially the small things. Some people, every small thing that happens, they keep it inside. You know, 12 years ago, when you walked in here, you frowned at me. Hey, relax. What happened? I might have just been winking in order to remove something from my eye or whatever. 12 years ago, a wink. A little frown, you kept it in your heart, subhanallah. May Allah make us from those who forgive. There were bigger things. There were bigger things at the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa that he told or Allah instructed the companions to forgive. I give you one example. Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu, his daughter Aisha radiallahu anha was accused of immorality by the hypocrites. One of them was a man known as Mistah ibn Athatha radiallahu anhu. He made a mistake. His tongue was messed because he spread the rumor. How many ever spread rumors about others? Many. Very dangerous. These people might forgive you, but it goes down in your book to say you did this. So what happened is, Allah says, those whom Allah has bestowed with his virtue and those whom Allah has given from his wealth and from goodness they should never take an oath not to spend on the poor and the needy and those who made hijrah, etc., etc. They should forgive and embrace. Do they not want the forgiveness of Allah? When Abu Bakr as Siddiq heard this, he forgave the man without batting an eyelid. 
If Allah is telling me, forgive and you shall be forgiven, I forgive. I forgive. I want to ask you a serious question, my brothers, my sisters, dearest viewers, and those who may see this later on. Are you prepared to forgive your own siblings whom you might have had a problem with? Are you prepared to forgive them? Are you prepared to make amends? Are you prepared to let go for the sake of Allah? And Allah will let go of you the day that you might be caught on the wrong side with the sins. Are you prepared for this day to be a day where Friday, beautiful, blessed, if you were to die right here, right now, it would be considered a beautiful, blessed death. Are you prepared to forgive those who have wronged you? You prepare? Some of you are looking at me like people owe you two million rands. Mashallah. In that case, let me teach you. You forgive them from your heart, but you can still pursue the two million. Subhanallah. I'm not asking you for 10% to have taught you. But, insha <laughs> but inshallah, you pray for all of us. We pray for each other. And that brings me to another point. You want to live together with each other. You are going to have to pray for each other. You are going to have to pray in the, in the way you pray for yourself, for others too. Oh Allah, bless me. Bless my brothers too. Bless those who don't have. Subhanallah. One day I was saying this hadith uh, that, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asks us to wish for our brother what we wish for ourselves, you know. So he says, you know, I've got my Lamborghini outside and I wish for it. You mean it's mine. But do I have to give my brother or can I just say, oh Allah, I wish for him too, one like this, you know. <laughs> Subhanallah. That car, that materialistic thing should not create a barrier in your heart because of the pride that it might bring about through the devil between you and your brother or someone else. That is it. You can drive whatever car you want. Are you humble? Do you greet people? You can live in whatever type of accommodation you have. Five star, six star. Let's put another one. Seventh, one from Zimbabwe. No problem. <laughs> but I can tell you, still, it should not make you arrogant. It should never make you arrogant. Be humble. And this is how you'll be able to live together with people. If you want to live together with people, do not flash what you have in front of the people in order for their hearts to grieve. Whether it's on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, or in real life. Sometimes we flash what we don't have. I know of a real case where people in another continent, they go to the stores in order to test the clothes and the shoes and the watches and the eyeglasses, sunglasses, and they take pictures, pictures, and they put them up everywhere as though they have a new pair of shoes, new glasses, new everything, but no one knows that after taking the picture, they took it out and told the salesman, sorry, we're not going to buy it, too expensive. And they walked out. And then they had their jalopy waiting out there for them. Yet they went into the Tesla showroom in order to take pictures. Check my car. It's not your ride, brother. Subhanallah. We should never do that. Don't intentionally want to boast, show off and brag. Subhanallah. Because then people will develop a hatred for, against you. This person's a show off. No. Don't do that. Never try and fall for the trends that the globe has right now. Subhanallah. Of showing off. Do you know a lot of what you see online is not real life? They show you things. Subhanallah. May Allah forgive us. Recently I had a case where someone told me that they were dating someone online. They wanted to marry them. When they saw them in real life for the first time, they had to ask, are you the real, really the person I was seeing? They were so different. The brother says, I had to say, A'udhu Billah. <laughs> so I said, Subhanallah. He wanted me to pass a fatwa that using Photoshop is haram because he says we've just been seeing Photoshop, video shop, every other shop. Brothers and sisters, you want to live with each other. Be yourself. No need to be ashamed of the identity Allah has given you. You have two, three huge pimples on your forehead. No problem. May Allah bless you. That is you. Subhanallah. You don't have to pretend who you are not. Be proud of your identity, the good pride. I'm talking of happiness, not talking of the bad pride. Be happy with what Allah's given you. He gave you teeth that are like this. He gave you ears that are like that. No problem. That's me. Take it or leave it. What do you say? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from those who appreciate each other for who they are. So here I've presented to you some of the ingredients of being able to live with each other. We forgive each other. We care for each other. Understand that everyone's temperament is different. They will think differently. Some people want the food hot. Some people want it cold. And when I was young, they taught us that some like it in the pot. Nine days old. Have you heard that one? When I was young, they taught it to us. 
Only now I realize why they said that. For us to understand that, you know what? People are different. Even in food. When you like something, others like something else. Alhamdulillah, it's okay. Allah made you differently. Don't become too fussy. When you are fussy, you will not be able to live with people. And another very important point. We all like to be neat and clean, I hope. Sometimes people have this OCD whereby they are perfectionists. If the, if the mat is not this way and the slippers are not that way and the toothbrush is not put that way and the toothpaste is not that way, it is qiyama. Don't let that happen. Be easy going. Talk to the people, your children, your family members. Look, you know what? Let's try and set a standard of cleanliness. A little bit here and there. It's okay. So what? It doesn't need to be absolutely perfect. If you are a perfectionist and you are extremely fussy, trust me, nobody's going to get along with you. Allow them to do their things. Another thing, you want to live with people, you want to live together. Watch your temper. Don't allow yourself to get angry. Qala la taghdab. The Prophet ﷺ in so many ahadith, he gave advice. Don't get angry. Watch how many people are paying the price of the temper. In a fit of rage, they do things where they regret later. Watch out. You want to live together? Deal with your temper. Don't get angry. Subhanallah. The children will break things. People will bash the vehicle, for example. Your child might come back with a huge scratch. Something might happen. Maybe some breakage, some robbery, whatever else. Maintain calm. Maintain calmness. Thank Allah it could have been worse. Allah might take away something from you. Had you not been happy with that, He might have taken away something bigger from you. So just thank Allah. Today, you wouldn't believe it. 30 minutes ago, I was at Oliver Tambo Airport. Don't ask me how I flew here. I promise you, I told myself I surrendered to Allah. I was meant to arrive at 9 o'clock in the morning. I ended up arriving at 11.30. Subhanallah. And I had surrendered totally. I said, if Allah wants me to be there, I will be there. If he doesn't want, it's okay. It's fine. Life shall continue. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease. And Allah wanted us to be here. But he wanted also to test, to say, are you happy with what we've chosen for you? You have to be happy. You cannot be upset. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us. That was so easy. I pray that Allah does not test us with bigger tests that make it difficult for us. My brothers and sisters, we need to love each other for the sake of Allah. You are brothers and sisters. Don't look at people with hatred and enmity. People don't share your faith. You understand. You will keep on talking to them. You will keep on trying. That was your duty. That was always your duty. It's called da'wah. It's called propagation. You keep on trying with them. But whether they accept it or not is up to Allah. And they are answerable to Allah. Keep on talking to them in a good way. There are people who drink alcohol. Do you agree? There are people who drink alcohol, people on drugs. What do we do as Muslimin? We don't like the habit. We don't like the addiction. But the person, we will care for them. We will try with them. We will pray for them. We will cry for them. And we will have hope for them right up till the day we die. Right up till the day we die. Trust me, I've met people who were addicts. Total, in the nightclubs, drunkards. And you know what? There came a stage when Allah gave them such guidance that they became stronger than you and I in faith. If we did not have hope or if the world gave up on them, they would have gotten worse. Yes, I do know that it's, it's difficult. What I've just said now, some of you might be facing challenges that require advice because it becomes too much. People become violent. You have to protect yourself. People become, for example, very, very ugly. You have to save yourself. But don't do so. In a way that makes the problem worse. You want to live together. When there is a problem, try to resolve it. Or minimum is, let it stay where it is. Never let you become yourself a vehicle of making the matter worse. My brothers and sisters, what a beautiful topic. Living together. I hope and I pray that these few words can help us the globe over. To become people who can live with each other. Starting from your own home. Take it easy on your children. Take it easy on your spouse, your parents. Take it easy on your in-laws. Take it easy on them. I see them smiling, mashallah. Every time we talk about in-laws, the, the whole mood changes in the mosque. Subhanallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless every one of us. Your neighbors, the others, those whom you have a dispute with, take it easy. You, you need to know how to channel 
the argument that you have with them. You need, like I said, be mature and respectful. I told you, if they owe you something, you can pursue it. You have every right to pursue it. Be respectful. You don't have to become ugly about it. And you need to understand, together, we were sent onto this earth. Not just me, not just you. Together, we were sent onto this earth. We have a mission on earth to prove to Allah that we will fulfill that. Be kind to the rest of the creatures of Allah. Irhamu man fil ardi, irhamkum man fil sama. Have mercy upon those on earth. Allah will have mercy upon you. All of those on earth. Have mercy on them. Be merciful. And Allah will have mercy on you. May Allah bless you all. Aqulu qawli hadha. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad.